Hey everybody, welcome back to Everyday Barbecue. My name is Mike and this is the channel where me, Mike, an everyday guy, cooks up everyday meals for you. So today I'm gonna show you how I do spatchcock chicken. One of the most important parts of this cook is nailing that final temperature. And to do so, today, I'm lucky enough to get to introduce you to another new Inkbird product. It is fully wireless and runs on Bluetooth, which is gonna make it absolutely perfect for today's cook. I'll be going into a lot more detail on that later, but for now, let's get back to this spatchcock chicken. Yeah, I know it's got a funny name, but trust me, it is incredibly delicious. And when you do it the right way, you're gonna get amazing results. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how I get crispy skin. I don't know if you can hear this, but that skin is nice and crispy and amazingly juicy results my god that's good with a process that you can repeat time and time again with a great tool to take all the guesswork out so if you're ready to see how to get this done go ahead and hit that like button and let's go once again welcome back everybody really appreciate having you here and let's get right into this recipe so to start with we want to make sure that we're buying chickens if you're doing two like I am today that are similar in size this is going to assure even cooking and that they're both going to get done right around the same time which is always good for a family dinner right I mean the only question worse than are we there yet is when's dinner going to be ready so do yourself a favor and set yourself up for success by buying a pack of chickens that's similar in size these are each right over five Five pounds. Now the first thing I like to do is to get my baking tray ready. I use a large foil pan with a couple of wired racks at the bottom and there's a reason for that. Keeping the chickens off the bottom and catching all those delicious drippings. So I like to start by pouring a couple cups of chicken broth at the bottom of this tray. This is just going to help catch those drippings without everything drying up at the bottom of the tray because those drippings are delicious at the end of the cook when you're serving this up. And it's now time to prep the chickens by removing the backbones which is aka spatchcock. All we need to do is unpackage the chickens, get them out onto a board, and remove any bags of giblets from the inside. Now, although you can use a sharp knife for this, sometimes you have a tendency to overcut and go way too deep. So get yourself a good set of kitchen shears. That's what works the best. Start by just getting a feel for where the backbone is. It's very easy to feel and very easy to identify. Now just grab your shears, start at the bottom, and begin clipping your way all the way to the top. This isn't very hard to do, just take your time and continue to work all the way up. It should only take you a couple minutes to get this whole backbone out. Once you're done with one side, just move over to the next side and continue to do the same thing until you get all the way up and get that backbone out completely. And by the way, you don't have to waste this. This will make really good chicken stock, so you can set it aside and use it for that if you like. Once the backbone is out, just open it up, and I like to make a little cut here in the breastbone area. This makes flattening it out so much easier. So just grab your knife or your kitchen shears and make a small incision there in the middle of that bone. Now just get the chicken flipped over, and we're going to be pressing down in the center area of that breastbone to crack. It. Listen up. And there you go. That's probably the hardest part of the whole operation, and it was that simple. So now just flip it over, and it's time to pat this dry with some paper towels. We're going to be doing that on both sides, but I like to start on the inside because it's going to be cooking inside down, which means once we flip this over and season the top, we won't have to flip it anymore. We'll be able to put it right in our tray. And now that that's all dry, it's time to season it up. And for my weeknight cooks, the kids love Laurie's, so I just use Laurie's because I don't want to hear them complain. Normally, I like to add some herbs to my chicken. It really, really loves herbs. But for the kids, I just stick with the Laurie's. But just know you can use any rub or any seasoning that you like. I do recommend herbs, though. It really, really loves herbs. I can't say that enough. Poultry loves herbs. So things like sage and thyme. They're going to go really nice with chicken. And we're not doing a dry brine today, but I want to make it clear that if you have time, like if it's not a weeknight and you want to do a dry brine, dry brines are going to give you even better results. The drawback is you got to do it a day early. You got to make room in your fridge and so on. So I'm just showing you the easy way today. But dry brines work even better. So be sure to be generous with this seasoning and go ahead and cover all the surfaces that you can. And once you're content with that, flip it over and it's time to repeat this process on the top side. Patting down the moisture off this top side is especially important because this is what's going to get you that really nice crispy skin at the end. So be sure to be pretty thorough with this. And of course, be generous with your seasoning on this side too. That salt is also going to help dry 
dry off the skin and give the bird some flavor. And don't worry, it's not going to be too salty. It's not going to soak through to the meat as much as you might think. The skin will be pretty salty, but that's kind of what you want, isn't it? Salty, crispy skin? That's what makes it good. If you've got another opinion, put up your dukes and let's fight in the comments. All right, once you have both chickens ready, just get them in your tray and get them ready for the oven. We're just going to let these hang out for a little bit and soak up some of the seasoning while the oven preheats. And then I've just got to get a meat probe in here to monitor the cook. And speaking of that, while we're waiting for all that to happen, let me introduce you to this Inkbird product. I've got to admit, I'm pretty excited to test this thing out. We'll start with unboxing and showing you what's in the package. We have the main case box, which stores and charges the meat probe, and by the way, also serves as a repeater for extended range for signal for the Bluetooth. Then we have a booklet and a charging cable. Obviously, the big feature here is this being completely wireless, so you don't have to worry about wires hanging in and out of the oven or the grill and great for rotisserie style cooking. And it does read both internal and ambient temperatures. The probe handle is made of sturdy, high quality heat resistant materials and it's waterproof, which means it's perfectly safe for the dishwasher. The case can charge the probe fully in 25 minutes and it's magnetic. So charge the case occasionally and it'll charge your probe. There's a QR code you can scan in the booklet, which will take you directly to the spot where you download the Inkbird app. Now I already have the app, so you may have to go through a few more steps than this, but basically all I need to do is add Add this product to my product list within the app. Once you do that, just make sure it's charged and then you can pretty much use the probe. You'll clearly see there's a mark on the probe called the safe cooking line. You want to make sure when you insert the probe into the chicken that it exceeds that line. One of these chickens is slightly larger than the other, so I'm inserting the probe in the breast of the larger chicken and trying to get it to the deepest, coolest part of the breast. That's where we want to read temperatures from. All right, the oven's preheated, let's get these in. We're gonna cook these today at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about two hours, then we'll crank up the oven towards the end. Typically the whole cook takes two and a half to three and a half hours, depending on a few variables. And now that our chickens were warm and cozy in the oven, I decided to start familiarizing myself with the app. So not only does it monitor temperatures and provide charting and graphing, but you've also got a light mode, a dark mode, and a number of other things in here if you're a gadget person. For me, I just wanted to monitor the cook, so I went into the app, I chose chicken, I did not adjust the target temperature, I left it at 165, and then basically just allowed it to go ahead and cook. And while it was cooking, I decided to go upstairs and get some quick cardio in. I thought it would be a good opportunity for a Bluetooth range test too. By the way, if you make fun of my hair, I'm coming to get you. Well, the chickens are in the oven and I'm upstairs on my exercise bike, <laughs> just trying to get a little workout in while I wait for those to cook up. So. Um, all the way, the point of this is that I'm all the way across the house, like the kitchen couldn't be farther away. The kitchen's all the way, if you can picture the bottom right of the house, and I'm in the top left, and uh, have no signal issues whatsoever. So that's a good test, good pass of the test, I should say. I did check in on these a couple hours in, they were doing just fine, and temperature was sitting right around 153, so I decided to crank up my oven to 425 to finish them off. And by the way, the app does have built-in notifications to alert you when you're around your target temperature. And just a short while later, I had broken my target temperature range of 160 to 165, and it was time to double check those readings with an InstaRead thermometer just to make sure we're safe. You always want to measure from the deepest, coolest part of the breast, and the chances of you hitting Hitting that spot with the probe the very first time are not real good, so make sure you're always double checking with an Insta read. Make sure it's safe. And in full disclosure, I did have about a five degree variance at one point, but that's likely just due to the probe not being in the deepest, coolest part. That's why you always want to use an Insta read. Again, always use an Insta read, especially when it comes to poultry or pork. Just be safe and double check. So now that I knew my temperatures were safe, I just let the chickens rest for about five minutes, removed the probe, and it was time to carve it up and see how we did. I always start by removing the leg and the thigh, then the wing, and then I carve down into the breast so I can remove it properly. And I know I showed you this earlier, but look at these results. They speak for themselves. We kept this cook very basic. We didn't dry brine. We didn't do any special prep. This is just a basic weeknight type cook preparation, and it turned out amazing. And again, you can do more, you can dry brine, you can get better results, but I don't think there's anybody watching who wouldn't take these results. I don't know if you can hear this, but that skin is nice and crispy. And this is the proper way to cut a breast. Cheers, everyone. My God, that's good.
Look at all that juice on the board just from one breast. So having a good thermometer is a really important part of nailing this cook the way we did today. So make sure you have one, whether you want to use this or something else, but I'll have a link for this one down in the video description. My kids are going to be home from school any minute, so this is perfect timing. They're going to enjoy this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you on the next episode.